The beginning of my career was basically focused around large-scale mural relief carvings for corporations and hospitals, park facilities. I've even done a couple of cemetery pieces. But here of late, I've happened upon this new medium, which is clay, new to me, and I've decided I really like working small. I can pick these pieces up, I can move them around. I've always been fascinated with clay, and now I have the opportunity to investigate it, and I've figured out how to carve it and make it my own and translate my carving in stone into carving on these small-scale images. Most of them are based on birds, and I just really have this I don't know, I guess a love affair with birds. And so I throw these vessels and carve on them and paint them any color I want, and urethane them. And then I actually go back to the carving of stone and create a base for each one of them. And that sort of elevates the bird and the sculpture because it now has a pedestal with which it stands on. And the two pieces are married together to create a unique, one-of-a-kind piece of artwork, and I just love doing that. So the process involved with making these pots begins with a, a vessel that is thrown, simple shape, not very big, depending on the size of the pot that I want to work with. And it's a simple vessel, and then I squeeze it in to give it shape, and then I pull this part out to make a beak since all of these vessels are based on birds. Once that has happened, then I start extruding clay and rolling clay and creating a tail and then adding stuff on for a beak. And it's all pretty large and kind of clumsy and that's because I'm not real sure what I want this to look like and I start carving away once the clay becomes leather hard. So this is the next stage where I built this on and now I've started carving to get a design and I just use these little tools and I start picking away. I create texture with this and I remove clay with this. Uh, it gives me, it's, it's busy body work but I kind of like it because most of the work that I do is very labor intensive like this. Um, and I like fuss, fussing, <laughs> I guess. After the pots have been carved, they go through another process. Uh, they get bisque fired in the kiln. After they're bisque fired, then they get glazed on the interior. After they're glazed on the interior, they go back into the kiln and they get fired once more. I do not glaze the outsides of my pots. I like to paint them. So I just paint with an acrylic paint. And I lay a base coat down first. And I really don't know what this is gonna look like, but I know I want it to have this nice terracotta base coat. Most people glaze their pots, but I don't like that process. It's so tedious and you never really know what you're gonna get. So I decided since these are my pots, I can do whatever I want. So I'm painting. After the base coat of the acrylic paint dries, then I come back in and if it needs another coat, I give it another coat. If it doesn't, we move on to the detail work where then I start adding other color like you see on this pot here. So this bird is very deep and rich and lush and I got my idea for all this deep rich color from watching a video of the birds in paradise. I found them to be very intriguing. And I want these birds to be really different one from the next. So there's a lot of variety in the color that I choose. This face I carved before I had the bird carved and I just reversed that process 
because I could. I just wanted to see if it made that much of a difference because sometimes when the bird is in the kiln being fired, I've got dead time and I want to use that time. So I just decided to carve the base first. Once the base was carved and the bird was painted, then they go together as a unit. And I think the design on here pretty much goes with a design on the bird. And each one of these is carved individual. No two are alike as the birds. No two are alike with the bird carvings either. So the texture here is created with different chisels, but it matches the texture up here, which is made with different uh, clay tools. I start by doing something like put a, a, car, a, a simple drawing on here, which will indicate I'll try to follow the flow of that stone. So I'll just do something like this. And it's not precise by any means because I'm not sure what I want this to be. So maybe it'll end up being something like this. Um, so that's how it begins. And then I'll follow this with a chisel. Okay, this bird, I try to give titles to them. That sometimes they're very whimsical and sometimes they're not. I haven't figured this one out, but it does have a lot going on. And I try to make each one of these pieces a little more complicated than the one before. So I'm not real sure, except it looks like it's a water bird of sorts, just because of the color and because of the wave things here. So I haven't titled that one yet. This bird is a little bit earlier. Um, he's a little smaller, the base is a little smaller, and he has a lot more whimsy to it with his eyes and this little plumage on the top of his head, and then again the tail. And the, when I came home from India a number of years ago, 2011 or something, lots of these things occurred on their art and that, and I, th I thought that I would include that on here. And he just makes me kind of laugh. It's kind of like he's hunting. So I call this one On the Hunt. This particular pot, uh, the green and yellow here, has to do with two different kinds of uh, inspiration. The handle reminds me of wisteria. And all of these curly cues remind me of the fiddlehead fern. And then because uh, wisteria has all these crooked kinds of branches in that, I found this and I decided that it looked really good in here. Uh, once again, it sort of elevates it. It's, it's, a, it, it's a marriage of different materials. So you have natural growth form, clay, and stone. And what I like about this is it's all from the earth. So you've got the stone that comes from the earth, the clay, and the branches. I call this one Fiddle de Fern because of all the curly cues. It just reminds me of the fern. And it's different from every angle, and that's what I like about it too.